Okay, good morning. Uh, welcome to Earth Bend and our tech talk. Uh, ideally, we'll be roll rolling these out each quarter with different uh, subjects. Hopefully, it will be of uh, interest to the community as well as um, our customers. This is a, a, a program that we started a few years ago, and we do this periodically. Like I said, we try to get them done each quarter with highlights in what's changing in technology, what we're seeing in the environment. So hopefully after this one, Brandy can kind of have a close up and tell you what our next event will be planned on. We're really focusing on security. We're finding a lot of our customers in town are getting hit with this crypto blocker. I'm, I'm not going to say anybody in this room that's been hit by one, but uh, uh, we had another customer yesterday that got hit by one, and there was a bank, that, I'm sorry, a hospital that got locked up in Kentucky yesterday with this crypto blocker that really causing some havoc. But little intro. I'm Joe Galanis. I'm the VP and general manager of this great team. Um, I've been in technology for 25 years, which we've been getting along in the tooth now. Uh, I started off in telecom, so this this topic of, of unified communication is near and dear to my heart. Um, so uh, I speak about it with a lot of passion because I've been through the days when you could hear a pin drop. If those people remember the long distance days. I was in that world for a very long time. So. I've also brought people in from Mitel. Kyle Holmgren uh, is, is our lead channel account manager on our premise space solution. He's over there, he's going to present in a few minutes. And Dick Croton is the Mitel cloud channel manager. So talking about what, what uh, Mitel can do for us <coughs> across the spectrum of, of services. Support team, Bob is our lead engineer for Mitel. Bonnie is our director of unified communication and we wouldn't be here without Brandy. She got the food and the drinks <laughs> and the prizes. The most important reason why we're here. <laughs> so what are we really here to talk about? Convergence. Has anybody seen this happen in their environment? Convergence in the technology world is where you find one device doing something that it was set along to do and now it's doing 50 other things. Pretty soon you'll have a toaster that can be a blender that can, you know, process coffee. But, and that was the New York coffee, I just said it, sorry. Um, but we're, we're encountering this. You know, the one interesting thing about working and running a technology company is we're like uh, the cobbler's kids. Uh, where's Sean? Is Sean in here? Our, our director of engineering is, you know, always out serving other people's technical problems, and we have the same problems that you guys have, the challenges that you have here in our building, because we just don't have enough time to focus on our own technology. So we're going to start with convergence. Ultimately, what I want to try and do is set the table for what's changing in uh, telephony and is now converting into unified communications. This is something that we're dealing with every day. This is more or less the consumer. This is us, how we're dealing with technology. You'll see that there's, I don't know how many people have wearable technology today. You know, they have a Fitbit, they have the smartwatch. Uh, you know, some people, my, my parents are old, they might have some medical device that's monitoring what the heck's going on with them. Um, but this is, is, is really taking root. And all indications are by 2018, this will have prevalence in the marketplace. So people, our customers, your customers, are engaging with technology in a different way. Businesses, this is an example of a marketing organization, how, how convergence changed. When I first started in business, there wasn't any digital stuff. I mean, you did TV, radio, and print. Now you're getting pushed with ads through, you know, you hit a specific web page, you're giving you specialized content, they're being marketed to based upon you know, what your, your predisposition is based upon your psychographics, your demographics. This is all happening. But this is all electronic, and it's collaboration. So the information is going back and forth and hitting us in five different ways. And then finally, convergence on apps. This is as of 2015, so uh, 10 and a half million downloads each month just for iOS. Of that, what's important for you guys to recognize is 15% of those are business and activity apps related to work. So that means 85% is Candy Crush, 15% is business apps. So again, the technology is being pushed out and in people's hands today. <clears throat> the next thing that we're finding in our business is the new workforce. Uh, is Alan here? He's my new workforce. Love him to death. Hardworking. They're interesting. Millennials are not any different than what we are. They just think differently. They operate differently than what we used to. Um, mobility. They expect everything like lickety-split. Like they don't understand that there's like a process. 
like what? I hand it in and it doesn't just magically pop up in my inbox. Um, they're challenging traditional environments. I get into why are we doing this? Why, why is this taking so long? This is good, this isn't bad. Um, they are connected at all times. I'm tweeting at him that when he tweets out something goofy. Um, they want data and they want information. They desire flexibility across the board. Schedules, how they operate, how they work, how they show up to work. Um, and this is some, uh, some surveys that we got back that can access info whenever I need it. I'm expected to be contactable at all times. I'm expected to keep up to date with emerging technology. They're on top of it. Where are the laggards? These people are moving into the environment and taking it over. The interesting piece, though, is hiring men, millennials are not used to standard working environments. I think we're seeing that. <coughs> um, how this impacts and why I brought this up in this conversation, um, in our marketplace, hiring good people is at a premium. Organizations that don't have the best technology kind of shun the young kids. I, I went out and I spoke to a manufacturing organization and they solid, they've been around for years, very profitable, and the hiring manager said, I just can't get you know the young generation into my building. And I said, you want to know why? You look like you were built in 1920 and you still operate like 1920. I said, there's no glitz, there's no, where's the information, where's the technology, how do they interact with you, how do you interact with them? So this isn't just for how you deal with your day-to-day -day business operations, how you attract more employees. Having the latest and greatest does attract new employees, believe it or not. Another thing, how they work. These guys were born in the cloud. What does that mean? Has everybody used Facebook? I don't know, we're kind of the older generation. Yeah, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, they're used to doing, my kids do their homework entirely. They don't even bring home books anymore. Um, it's just crazy. They can't envision the time. My kid said, Dad, what was it like in 1930 when they didn't have the internet? I'm like, 1930? <laughs> <laughs> But the, the truth of the matter is he was born in this century. He has no concept of time, of what it was like. Um, they trust the cloud. Unfortunately, they trust the cloud too much. From a security perspective, that's a big concern. Right, Dan? They trust the cloud way, way too much. We deal with that all the time. They're app and mobile centric, which means if I can't get it on my phone, then what point of it? And they expect when they come to a workplace, to be able to collaborate. That means they want instantaneous communication. Can I chat with somebody? Can I send them an email? Can I video conference with them? What do you mean you don't have that? I Skype my friends all the time. What do you mean I can't do this? Well, there's an office on the other side of town. Well, I'm not going to get in my car and see them. I'll just chat with them, see what's going on I'll about my business. Believe it or not, this is what's coming. So it's again, I'm just trying to set the table for what the changes are that we're seeing in the marketplace. Avoid the unified communication, what the product looks like for the upcoming couple of years. Um, VoIP trends are hosted, PBX, phone, that's a phone system, and cloud. Uh, they want to reduce maintenance and staffing costs. As technology improves, the cost does go down. However, the complexity increases because you're interconnecting it to a million different things. Lots of features. You know, back in the day, I remember you could leave a voicemail. Whoa! That's pretty cool. No more pink slips while you were out. Ron and I can appreciate that. Those were a happier time. You know? <laughs> I didn't get your message. I didn't get your message. Um, Backend analytics. This may not apply to all of you, but there's a lot of businesses that are tying all their devices, all their mechanisms in to really dive in to say, well, how much time are my people spending on the phone? How many calls are my people getting in? Is it related to a product? Is it related to a service? Why, why is that one service? Is it a personal issue? So that's all analytics, getting all this information. This is a key one. Mobile devices become primary VoIP handsets. What does that mean? Somebody comes into the office, I have an app on my phone that I can act as if I'm in the office. I could be sitting on a golf course and chatting with my team, sending you know, emails, and making phone calls as if I'm sitting at my desk, and I'm not. Uh, bring your own device, millennials. You know, we got to the point where, you know, at some, there was a point when companies used to pay for people's cell phones when they work from, that's gone now. They just come and say, here's a hundred bucks, we'll wall it off, and this is your work information, and the rest of it's your, your personal information, right? Integration with cloud platforms and productivity applications. Apps, CRM, that's customer relations management tools. ERPs, billing system, marketing automation tools. They're all available, and a lot of our customers are integrating their phones, 
their billing systems, their customer systems, their marketing systems all together. That's what's happening. It's really true convergence of VoIP and UC. Uh, why did I put this side? Premise base. This is traditional phones. These guys have been the leaders for as long as I've been in the business, pretty much. Well, my Microsoft has been a more recent one, but Cisco, Avaya, and Mitel. All in the top part. On the UC space, you got a lot of people in here that don't really know very much about telecom. Oh, wait a second. There's Mitel. That's one of the reasons why we chose Mitel to be our premier partner, is because not only have they done and built telephony systems for umpteen years, they understand telephony, but they're also providing cloud service for us to be able to provide to you guys. That's important to us because, honestly, I've dealt with these companies in past lives. They get technology. They get uh, voice, voice over IP, but they don't get telephony. They don't understand that if you have an office in Buffalo, that you're never going to get that phone switched over to them because there's only one you know, independent phone company, and they're never going to switch that phone line. So you won't be able to get their service out there. They don't get that. Um, why? 63% of companies have at least one app in the cloud. Does anybody, do you guys have an app in the cloud? What are you guys using for project management, all those kinds of things? Do you have any apps in the cloud that you're using? We use WorkRigid. WorkRigid, okay, so Salesforce, WorkRigid, uh, we use NetSuite, Billing, QuickBooks, all those things are in the cloud. Anybody use GoToMeeting? That's in the cloud. So 63% of companies have at least one app that they're using in the, in the cloud. This was as of, I forgot what it was, it was at the end of last year, the Gartner report. Um, one out of three enterprises have moved their cloud-based email and calendar. So we're doing that pretty often. We do one a month with our customers that have said, I'm not paying for that server, I'm just going to go to Office 365. Um, cloud to left me grew 18%, market-wide penetration. With another six, so that means at the end of this year, 25% of the people that will be making phone calls will be making from a hosted phone system. Uh, the chain drivers, people want to save money, they want scalability, they want features and functionality, and IT. Who was that one IT guy that was that made that face? There we go. I mean, you, you're, you're buried. It started with a mail server or a file server, and now you got all these things. You've got security, you've got Wi-Fi, you've got uh, you know access points, you've got servers, you've got you've got a million things you've got to manage, and it's still the same person with the same budget that hasn't changed or has gone up very little. So one of the reasons you're here is to understand delivery methods. Again, Mitel can deliver all the services in any of the delivery methods, and we can enable that. You know whether it's premise based, that's largely capex expenditure. I'm going to buy a new phone system. I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put it in for you guys and you guys manage it, okay? That's the first one. That's traditional. Hybrid or managed. We have customers that want to do a combination of on-site and in the cloud. Or they say, I want no part of this, Joe. You guys manage it. I'll just pay you monthly for services and the solution itself. And then cloud-based. Subscription-based, it's cloud solution only where you, you're leveraging the, the, the savings of the cloud, you get your long-distance charges, but you know, it's probably, what do you say the reliability is in comparison to a premise based system in your history? Uh, I would say that it's actually better because most of them have redundant ROS built in. Yep. So when this first started, this is where, remember when uh, cell phones first came up and you could guarantee that you would drop at least a call a day or you couldn't hear somebody on the other end? This product has gone through that evolution of where it's getting better and better and better and more robust. So this now is competing against the premise base, which used to be rock solid as far as reliability. So again, the reason why we chose it, the handsets are the same. So you can start in the cloud and move to the premise. You can start in the premise and move to the cloud, right? Correct. Okay, good. I want to better validate that my information is correct. <laughs> um, we're trained to, to uh, and ready to help you guys Pick with other path. We don't care where you start. You want to start here and go here, fine. You want to start here and come back here, fine. You can do that too. So it's really understanding what your business goals are for the upcoming years, what your environment looks like, what your customers look like, what your needs are, to determine what's the best way to deliver. What's do you have money in the budget? We've had customers that said, I need this now, but I have no money. Okay, so let's do a hybrid or a manage. 
oh, okay, let's do a cloud-based one. And then you can predict your cost for the next you know, three years. Um, that's all I had to say, really. So in summary, our, our environment's really changing. I mean, I've been here 10 years, and I can't believe the growth in Sioux Falls. It's phenomenal. Uh, the new technology of di displacing the old ways of doing business. We see this with a lot of our customers that we've been doing business for 20 years. Their kids are taking over, and they're like, well, my dad didn't really know what he was doing on this technology side, so let's get this straight now, right? Um, the decision makers are changing. Uh, the people that want to communicate, he's, look, he's looking at him. He's on his phone already. Get off your phone and pay attention to your boss or he's going to pay attention for God's sakes. See? This is what I got to do with every day. It's, work. it's like home at dinner. I got to like have phones on the side. Um, yeah, and the new workforce. There he is. Uh, so again, thank you for your time. I'm going to let uh, Kyle take the, the lead here. Let me sit up here, Kyle. Uh, no, I'll let you do that. So one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, when he's getting the slides ready, like he was talking, moving from the cloud, from premise, and things like that, right? One of the things that's might tell it's different, features and functionalities don't change. I really don't care where you put it. If you want to put it on your prem in your back room, hey, that's great. If you want to go all the way to the other side and you want Earthbend to be able to manage it, we don't want to do nothing, hey, here's the ticket, I'm done, change my voicemail, do whatever, you can do that, you don't lose features and functionalities. When you're out there looking, it's one of the big things that's out there is everybody can do cloud. What's the definition of cloud? Maybe on your VMware, right? Is it private, is it public? Right, all those different things. So, it's just some things to think about. A Little bit about Mitel and then I'll dive in. We've grown a lot. So I've been around for roughly 40 years, give or take, but we're an innovator. You know, we're listed as a hardware company, right, because we're in the phone system, but the, the, to, to tell you the truth, we're a software company. That's where we're at. We had no cloud business in 2010. Now we're the number one cloud company in the world, okay? No mobile business. It's coming. Now we're on the road to doing almost three billion connections every single day. In Europe, hey, we're number one in Europe. We're number four globally. You know, premise system, and now it's going to here. Reality is, no matter if you like it or not, things are going to the cloud, and they're going mobile, and I'll show you some different pieces um, <laughs> that are in there. It's going there. Right now, we're a uh, $1.2 billion company, so in five years, we doubled in size. Okay? Um, kind of our strategy, so you know where, kind of the big companies, right? You got your Cisco, you got Avaya, you got Mitel. That's kind of your three biggest companies on the planet that are out there, right? It's pretty easy going to the cloud and how we're getting there, right? It's rapidly growing market for us, it's simpler for you, right? It's only so much time in the day, right? Companies now are hiring less people because they all want us to do more, right? More bandwidth, things like that. <clears throat> going into the mobile market, and I'll show you a slide in there, right? 50% of every single call made today is from a mobile device. So guess what? If they're not working for you on their mobile device, right, well, that's probably personal, we're not making any money, okay? Managed services, private in the cloud, all of these things are coming together because not every, not every company can afford to have every single resource, right? Well, Earthman's already got the resources. I think we got 23 engineers on staff. Half of them are all VM certified, right, for you to be able to go. They can handle it. Uh, let's see, got over a million cloud seats. We have 2,500 business partners. Earthbend is the largest business partner that I have in my region. Oh yeah, by the way, they're only one of two that are exclusive, right? Everybody knows back before Earthbend was, this was part of DataNet, it was a division of Mitel. It's not a question on if they know it. I talk to some of them all the time, right? They've had big, sometimes longer relationships even than I do, right? Because those people are already still there. Got roughly 4,500 people um, in the company, and that keeps growing. We're, we're buying different companies all the time. The Magic Quad. Anybody here look at Gardner? You? Some of you? Okay. We're in five. We're the only company. The reason why is some of the companies out there that sell servers, right? Or they do th different things where phone is not their number one. It's part of their play, but not their number one. They're not allowed to make it. Phones is what we do. Right? Soft phones is what we do. 
in the cloud. And why I go through some of this is some of these is going to tell you, even though it's my tell or not, we're up 70%. He had talked about, I think it was like 23% for what the industry is. We're up 70% in cloud because it's going there and we're being forced to go there and go there quicker, right? Reoccurring, right? People want this as an operating expense. They don't want to hack out 200 <coughs> right just give it to me just like you where's my t1s or my internet and go since June of last year over 150,000 seats that's a lot markets changing so what we have to look at is from our customers what are people wanting and how they wanted to do it private and public cloud we've kind of talked about it how are people working how are you guys doing your how are you guys working I'm never, I'm never in my office, and my office is eight steps from my bed, right? And I'm never there. I do a lot of stuff from, and I'll show you a slide in there, from literally when I turn and pull over the side of the road and I'm doing my office right here. My cell phone is what I do, right? I can't do that with everybody. Unified communications, okay, and how you're collaborating. We just did a demo the other, this the other day for somebody, and I got on the video call from my mobile, right? Everybody talks about, hey, the CEO's on the golf course, right, and he's doing his thing. Well, now guess what? Now he can push a button and he can be on video because it's in the cloud, right? Security, it's always an issue. You know, Bob's the engineer in the back if you have, like, serious questions. This, for me anymore, it doesn't matter if I'm dealing with a data center that's got a 1,000 contact center seats or a five-person phone system we do. This is not existent. There's security everywhere, right? Everybody's got it, security, 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 but everybody can do it, right? Um, your mobile devices. Who here works remotely? Does anybody work remotely? You all work out of the office? You ever take business calls when you're not there? No? Not where I'm at my, my position, I know. That'd be Some awesome. Some of them That'd be awesome. are awesome. <laughs> <free. laughs> You're priests too. <laughs> so I will tell you, I'm working on a thing in Iowa that is a cloud deal for a whole diocese place with their campus. Because even though it's a church and things like this, what can, it's a campus. People live on the campus, there's office, there's people all over, right? They don't want to spend the money to hire a, a large IT guy, right? How can we put our money somewhere else and be able to handle it? That's kind of where Earthbend comes into play. The story of our life, because we all see this at Starbucks, right? How are we working? Am I working on my laptop here? Because none of them are in their office, right? Mobile device, mobile device, my iPad. You're going to have to change. My daughter's a freshman in college. When we travel up and down the road with her and her friends, she's doing FaceTime. They're doing it all via video. Reality is some of these kids coming out of college, they're going to start interviewing you on what communications you have and how you're doing it before they get employed because they don't know any different. We're in a unique position. I can do everything and it doesn't matter where. The cloud, enterprise, in the building, I can do any kind of phone system, which is from Earthbound, right? It doesn't matter if I'm old device, anything. I can, I can do it everywhere, right? So. You have to determine with your business where it's going and the people that you want to hire. And then, my goodness, what about our customers? Because we're just talking internal stuff. Now, how does the customer want to communicate with me? You may have a contact center, right? Or on your website, you're doing multimedia. You're having people from your website chat you, right? Are they emailing you at the same time? I couldn't do all that, but. Alliant Energy, I'm from Iowa, Alliant Energy, my energy company, heck, we can email them, we can do a chat with them, we can do everything online because they don't want to call. Because it's like 10 cents to do a message, right? And it's like $10 to receive a phone call. It's crazy, you guys probably know those numbers better than I do. 83% of today's companies haven't deployed an enterprise mobile strategy. Uh-oh. So I just got done telling you that the industry says that 50% of business calls are made from a cell phone every single day. And 83% of the companies haven't even reached it and haven't even aren't even working on it. I won't figure it out, right? Via the cloud, via manage. If you don't know, you have a partner here, right? You're here for a reason. Get with your sales guy or get with an engineer and just be like, hey, what are the options? <clears throat> and then this is something really just to think about. I like this slide. It has to do more with internal things that Mitel looks at. 
And I think it's good because not very many think about it. Everybody usually goes and hey, we want the knowledge worker. Who's the guy sitting at the desk and pounding? Right? 23% of the 20% of the workers do that. How about the information guys, the IT guys, things like that, right? That are doing it. You guys do 30% of the 35% of the business that's out there. But this is now where phone systems and people work. <coughs> 45% of every single company on an average is on the street. Salespeople, worker bees, your maintenance guy, whatever. How are we communicating? What I ever tell everybody, I don't know if people have kids or not have kids and things like that. You want to know the hardest person to get a hold of? How about the janitor at school? <laughs> Think about it. Now, now the janitor, right, he's my dad, right? And they're like, oh my God, i got to send a text. Because nobody can ever get a hold of him. But in every school deployment that I do, Guess which guy has twinning on his phone in mobile services? The janitor, because who knows where he's at? Coffee and donuts, but. So this is where you gotta start thinking of, my guy's on the street, how am I doing it? How am I communicating? How can I be better, right? Because if you don't do it, your competitor, he's doing it, so I'm gonna buy from him, right? Because it's all about that. Mobile-centric, things are shifting, okay? Real-time communications, I need it now. Right? Some people may not need it. I need to be able to be mobile. I need it in the cloud. And I need it right now. I left my phones back there because they're driving me crazy. Right? Because guess what? When Joe calls me, I don't have a choice to not call him back until tomorrow. Right? I need to call him now. Well, guess what? I need to email him now. I'm not an engineer. Right? I got to get a hold of Bob. I need to be able to chat via my phone or send him a PDF from my phone, send it to Bob and go, dude, handle this, right? How are they doing it? If you don't have the staff, you can do a cloud, be managed, right? They can do it for you. And again, just the unique position, and I like to put this up there, and we can put EarthBend right in here, right? I can do it, they can do it enterprise, they can do the mobile, they can do a cloud, they can put it in your back room, and guess what, you don't have to give up anything, right? You got the money in the bank, do it on prime, right? If you want to keep your money and you want to be able to life it out and you want somebody to manage it, go cloud. You have all these options, but now you don't have to get rid of anything. You don't have to be limited. They can do it all. And I always like to bring that up just to sink it in the head, right? Because everybody here is getting calls from phone companies all the time, right? This is what happens. And they pit certain things they can do and they forget about the things they can't do. You don't find it out till the end. This way, it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to turn this part over to Dick so he can handle some a little bit more granular on um, some of the cloud and some of the integrations. So I'll just hand it off and we can go from there. All right. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, hi. Um, thanks for coming, you guys. My name is Dick Creighton. I am um, a channel account manager. I support uh, EarthBend. Uh, Kyle and I both do jointly. Specifically, I work within the cloud aspect. So I'll go through just a couple of things as far as Bob. I think the overall message is here, and that is that, and Joe touched on this just a little bit earlier, and that is that it really doesn't matter whether you want to go cloud or whether you want to go premise. It's really up to what's best for your business. We can talk, Mycel and Earthman, we can talk to you about what's the solution, what's best for your business. Let's talk solutions from a communications and a um, uh, platform that's best for you for your collaboration, etc. But um, we can really, these are really the building blocks of what we provide at Mitel um, is the voice aspect of our system, um, the contact center, and then that whole collaboration piece. Those are the three building blocks, and we can deliver that whether that's something that you put on premise or whether you put it, you, you, the best thing is you think is for the cloud. So it's really, that's the message, is talk about solution, and then we can deliver it however you think you need it. If you need it, if you think premise is best for you today, and you want to go to cloud later, you can do that. Um, it's all the same software, same equipment, same phone on the desktop, et cetera. So it's really a great way to protect that investment. If you decide the premise is the best way, and you want to go cloud later, you don't have to rip and replace everything, okay? A lot of organizations, you're not going to be able to do that. Okay, so that's the underlying solution. Everything inter integrates with the infrastructure, the software, the devices, all the same. It's all about the solution. So <clears throat> while we can do, we, we try not to focus on cloud or premise, 
cloud guy, so I'm going to give you a little bit of information about why cloud makes sense. Um, and these are just some of the things. So, um, who's here? Who here is doing some sort of cloud within your business, whether it's Office 365, etc. Most organizations are doing some sort of cloud. They, they tend to think of voice sort of on the tail end as far as what services they have in the cloud. But a couple of quick reasons um, why customers look at cloud. Uh, it's a subscription-based model, so it's on a monthly, it's a monthly uh, cost or an operating expense versus capital expense. So those that don't have necessarily a lot of uh, capital funds to um, put in a new system, they, the hosted model is great because it's a, it's a manageable uh, monthly recurring that they know um, they don't have to have the capital budget for. Okay, um, it's flexible. We we can deliver as much. Um, or as little as you need at the moment. And if they, there's additional users or if there's additional functionality that you need, we can deliver that additional. We can build it in our data center and then type it in as you need it. So it's really easy to grow. Um, limited IT resources, uh, a lot of organizations, if you don't have any of the system, nothing sitting on, in, no, no equipment sitting in your office somewhere. Um, you don't have to have IT maintain it. Hosted is entirely managed. So, well, and, and, and that includes software updates. So all that, no, no need for software upgrade insurance, no need for um, IT resources to worry about what's going on with your phone systems. IT people can then focus on whatever is best for that, for the business from an IT perspective, okay? Um, Long distance usage is one thing to consider too. If you have a great deal of long distance um, that you're doing, especially with multiple locations, um, long distance is part of a hosted solution. So outbound long distance, in some cases, we can, we can deliver unlimited long distance with a certain type of service that we have. So keep that in mind as well. So because I've worked with situations where they, if we put in a brand new system, and because they had high long distance between multiple locations, we delivered a brand new system and it didn't cost them anything more from a monthly perspective than it did before, okay, because of that long distance aspect. Uh, business continuity is another big one. Um, because this is sitting in our data center, we'll build it exactly how you want it. We'll put it in our data center, tier four data center, carrier grade, highly reliable, redundant. No matter what happens with your business, whether you have you know, fiber cut, whether you are you have no power, um, that, those calls are going to route through to that instance of the data center. So you get through the auto tenant, you get through to DIDs, you get through to voicemails. We have something that called mobile twinning. So we can take any DID number on your system and twin it to a mobile phone. So that's where disaster recovery comes in. So you know that a call is going to get through to that data center. And, and that, that DID is twinned. That number that they're calling into is twinned with the cell phone. That phone <coughs> call is going to come through to that cell phone and a person who's sitting at a desk in the dark in the office, but that customer has no idea that, that, that you're down. So that's that business continuity aspect um, where with that mobile twinning feature that we have, um, you have that, you're covered. Customers are reaching you regardless of whether you're uh, in the dark or not, okay? Some of the areas we just do, we do really well from a vertical perspective, from a cloud uh, aspect. Um, healthcare, financial, legal, our solution is entirely secure. It's uh, because it's, it, it's in the, the data center um, situation that we're in, 128-bit encryption, all the way from the data center down to the phone itself. <coughs> Most solutions, you're not gonna see that. That's why we do so well in areas where people need to be HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, and, uh, and PCI compliant. Um, multiple locations is always really good too because we've got one instance of sitting in a data center and it's delivered via existing internet connections. So no, no need to worry about um, building a wide area network or VPNs, okay? And education, government, nonprofit, really big one. Who's familiar with uh, NJPA, National Joint Powers Alliance? Some of you, okay? Anybody who is, who, who in this room fits that vertical, education, government, nonprofit? Okay, any, any of you uh, should be familiar with NJPA. It's a, um, it's a contract that Mitel has exclusively. So it's, it's a couple of things. It's a discounting vehicle, so we can provide extremely competitive, uh, aggressive discounts for anybody in that vertical um, because they've already negotiated the pricing discounts. So 
it's, it's a great way to discount pricing that no other uh, provider has because it's an exclusive contract that Mitel has with NJPA. The other aspect of NJPA, it's a bid vehicle. So if your organization says, we need to go to bid, make sure we're getting the most competitive process, we might have to go to RFP. Those are generally you know, resource hogs. They take a long time. They take a lot of resources internally. Um, NJPA is its own bidding table. They've already done the work to make sure that the pricing is as good as you can get. Okay, so anyone in that vertical, um, Michael's a perfect solution to look at. Um, I want to switch by, I want to go to this one here. Um, we've, phone systems are generally going to work, people think, well, using my phone on my desktop, right? Um, and that's great. You can pick up your phone and make a phone call. We have, we have devices that are uh, phone sets that will do all kinds of things. Um, they have soft keys you can program, all kinds of different things in them. But what I want to talk more specifically about is the, the clients, the desktop client that we have. Um, so you can actually drive phone calls, uh, make and place phone calls, do instant messaging, etc., with people within the organization um, without ever having to pick up your phone. So you can do things, this is just a general look of what it looks like. You've got a list of all the calls you've made, inbound, outbound, you have missed calls listed, you've got a list of uh, contacts, people within the organization, you can do things like click to dial. I can click here and dial John Dillon. I can chat with him. If, if for some reason he's on his phone, if his phone is red, I can, I can elect to just click on that um, uh, on the chat icon. And, um, and you're doing collaboration now where, um, where you, you, maybe he's on a conference call, but he has the ability to do instant message. So it's a great way to collaborate and continue that productivity, um, even if somebody is, uh, happens to be on their phone. So um, lots it can do. I won't go into a lot of detail. I know we're trying, trying to stay the time. So, um, oh, let me go back real quick because I skipped over this one. But we actually have a, we have a mobile app as well as part of the solution. All of these things that I'm talking about when we talk about some of these specifics here, with the functionality, it's deliverable. It's something that we can deliver cloud or premise. Okay, so this isn't exclusive to cloud at the moment. Um, but we have a mobile app that actually extends. Everything you can do from your desktop, your phone, or your mobile, or, or that desktop client extends it all to your mobile phone, whether no matter what the operating system. Okay, so this is just a quick little look at it. Um, what the main looks like: you've got contacts, your call history. I can do chat from my uh, from my mobile device as well, um, and there's presence. So if I happen to be on my mobile app and I'm making a phone call. Others will see me on their desktop client as a red phone. So even though I'm out of the office <coughs> and on my cell phone, that the fact that I'm on my phone is going to be projected to others in the organization. They'll be able to see that. Okay. And the other thing about it is, it's uh, anytime you're dialing from within this mobile app, you're dialing from the company phone number. So you might have people out there that have their personal cell phones. Um, you can have this app on on their device. And when they're, as long as they're using this, it's going to look like they're making a call from that particular DID number for the business. Okay, so that's great. It's a great way to separate personal from from business on a cell phone. Okay. Integration, whether it's premise, whether it's cloud, we have fantastic integration. So all those things that businesses are using every day, whether it's Google, um, Salesforce. Um, Sugar, uh, Outlook, whatever it might be, we integrate with those tools. So from within those tools, you might be in a Salesforce where you, you're looking through doing some work, you want, you, you want to contact that individual, you can click on that phone number and it'll, the, the, phone, the phone will dial. So it integrates with all those things that everybody's using on a daily basis. Um, again, just drives additional productivity because it makes some of those things you're doing every single day more you know, simple, simply ties in the phone system to it. Okay. Sorry. Link is one of the others. Who's, who uses Link? Not too many people. Okay. In general, we see a lot of people, more and more people utilize Link. And it's typically for that um, the collaboration in the business. 
But when you take, um, if someone's using Microsoft, they're, tend, they're going to tend to be using Link, um, but it's going to be from a collaboration perspective. And if once you tie in through Microsoft, if you tie in telephony with that Link client, that drives up the cost. It's going to cost you, you know, a fair amount to bring that into P. Our solution will actually have this, this plugin at the bottom of the Link app, which will allow you to actually incorporate telephony into that. So now you're not just doing the collaboration um, in instant messages and, and things like that, but you're actually tying the phone system, the Lytel phone system, right in to Link here. So you can do your click to dial and things of, that, things of that nature. Okay? And we will, um, while we're, we'll deliver, whether again, whether it's a premise solution, whether it's cloud, we'll design the whole thing in cooperation with, with EarthBend. Once it's all set, the way exactly the way you want it, um, you have the ability to actually manage and maintain it yourself. So we have this happens to be a picture of the cloud um, application. So it's an administrator tool where an administrator, or if you have multiple people you want to have access to it, username, password, etc., allows you to go in and make changes to your uh, the system real time, even if it's cloud. Because from a premise perspective, people think, oh, I'm going to lose my ability to control or maintain the system. Uh, because it's not sitting in a phone room somewhere, right? With this app, you can actually go in and make all these changes yourself real time, even though the server's sitting in a data center somewhere. So um, it allows you to do things like even just change the buttons on your phone. Um, to change down here, you can see a list of um, rollover lines. So I can take phone numbers, move them in and out of that particular rollover group or hunt group, <coughs> and hit save and. In a matter of a few seconds, you've just made changes to that. So um, tool, the tools after the fact are fantastic for you to help, for you, for you to maintain it on your own. You always have the ability to, this, all these all, the, all these things that Kyle and I are, are, we're talking about are Mitel. This is all Mitel sort of behind the scenes, right? Because what we have is a fantastic partner at EarthBand They've been doing what they've been doing. They've been partnering with us for, uh, for for longer than probably anybody else out there. They know Mitel in and out. They were actually, you know, associated or part of Mitel at one point. So these guys know the stuff that Kyle and I are talking about up here inside and out. And the and the great news is, it's us behind the scenes. But you're going to be working with Earthband, and any sort of the, the implementation, the management, the support. It's all. It's all urban. And those guys, again, they, they know better than anybody else. So we're lucky to, to have them as our partner. So that's all I have. Um, let's see if you guys have any questions at this point.